Alright, attempt number two. Got both my valves are closed. Got a vapor generating loop on this one. And I'm going to try and start it up. Spill some fuel in there, shut it off, light it. We're almost there. Oh yeah. Now that the flame is out, I'm going to crack that open again, flood the vaporizer tube, cool it down. There is a cotton wick running through the vaporizer tube, kind of like with like the uh, coil stove. And I think it's burning because there's a lot of contaminants polluting the flame. And if you can see, if you can see in there, there's a lot of garbage in the bottom of the burner bell. And I think that's the wick burning because it's overheating. <coughs> uh, I may have to do like a wire cable. There we go. Now that I got liquid coming out, it's cool. Uh, a wire cable like they do with the white gas stoves. They call it a cleaning cable, though I suspect that that's actually there to act as a wick slash decrease the dead space in here that would ordinarily be filled with liquid. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that if you remove that so-called cleaning cable out of those stoves, it wouldn't run properly. I may have to employ something similar here. The needle valve will likely need some sort of redesign with the rubber seal in here. I don't know how much heat it can take. 
with the previous design I had this thing sticking way out joined to the burner body with a piece of stainless steel pipe. I chose stainless steel because it wouldn't transfer heat as quickly as copper or brass and so I had it put out here to protect it from the heat. That worked quite well but I was trying to use a different principle of operation. The MSR Dragonfly, for example, doesn't have this vapor generating loop. And that's because what I think they're doing is they're using the thermal feedback from the burner bell itself to, to heat it up down here to vaporize the fuel. And so this down here gets very hot, uh, so they moved it far away. Their needle valve seals far away to protect the seals. And I tried doing that. I tried doing no vaporizer loop and couldn't get it to work right. And I think that's because the thermal capacity of the brass piece down here, I'm going to let this thing go. It's not too hot. No, that's good. thermal capacity of this piece um, wasn't high enough and then when flooded with fuel the fuel would basically quench this thing and I'd, you'd lose all your heat and it'd start sputtering liquid no matter how hot this whole thing got you could quench this thing by adding fuel to it so I determined that I needed a vaporizer loop regardless, which then meant this has to be nice and close. Because if this is cool, you got your vapor generated here, and as it comes down, if there's, if it has to travel a long distance after being heated, it'll condense back into a liquid. And so now you want it nice and close, and I may have to do replace that seal with either a little piece of this silicone hose or maybe do like graphite packing or something yeah that's all I got for now Oh, one more thing. I think commercial stoves that use this design with the, the, the plate burner design that don't have a vaporizer loop, kind of like those ones that go on the big brass tank, the, the, the Swedish one, or like the MSR Dragonfly. I haven't been able to confirm this, but I believe their burner bell is made out of brass uh, although it's hard to tell by looking at it because they're, they're always kind of burnt but if it were made out of brass that would give very good thermal feedback down to here and I chose stainless steel because of the I wanted something that could take the heat and I didn't have anything made out of brass that was shaped like this this really isn't a shape I can produce myself although Maybe one of them doorknobs I'm so fond of would work pretty good, but yeah, that's another project.